a great idea. Like, it's something I've never seen before. It's not just graffiti, is it, really? It's, it's art. I think it's really surprising in kind of suburban East Dulwich to, to see something like this. The image of street art is that it's quite low lowbrow, unsophisticated, and it's just much more diverse than people think, and the culture is much deeper, and the artists are much better. There was a quote today in The Londonist saying that Dulwich is the new Shoreditch when it comes to street art. It's really it's art, isn't it? <laughs> It's not everyone's cup of tea, it's not for everyone this project. In, in a sense it's radical for street art. Um, I think it's quite ugly, I noticed it immediately. It's just a bit planned and shit really, I don't know. If they have a problem with me putting stuff up on the streets, the grey guys in the grey suits and the grey hair and the grey faces who have the grey jobs protecting the grey people, then they can come to me and I'll tell them that I've got a problem with them because they're the ones that make the wars. They're the ones who bail out the bankers. They're the ones who keep the elite people going. And all I'm doing is putting art on the wall. That's it. Now. Street art with a whole new meaning. These are examples of how classic paintings have been given on a modern twist, let's say, using spray paint. Barock the Streets is the name of the street art festival that invited about 16 internationally renowned street artists to Dulwich in order to have a look at the Baroque collection in Dulwich Picture Gallery and reinterpret it in their own style on the streets around Dulwich Picture Gallery. The idea started last year when I met Stick, who is another street artist. He went to Dulwich Picture Gallery, looked at the paintings there, was blown away by them. He'd never seen anything like it. And he started to reinterpret them in his own stick man style. When I came down, I just thought, oh, it's so sweet. <laughs> it's just gorgeous, isn't it? Well, because I was encouraged by the reaction of Dulwich last year, I thought, well, let's just make this bigger. And I met Griff. It's a quite unique project, and it's all to do with building bridges between classical and street art. Dulwich Picture Gallery was amazing in its time. It was the first public art gallery in England. And so it was the first institution to open its doors to the general public. The current art movement, I think, is street art. And so let's link what's happening now to what happened in the past. I suggested taking the project on, an, on a step and getting more artists involved. The artists that were in this project really are some of the top practitioners around the world. There's a long list of about 17 painters in around here, and each painter has a painting to, to Baroque. There's three categories of uh, artists. Difficult, very difficult, and impossible. It was challenging managing the relationships and introducing artists to the idea of interpreting these paintings. And some of them agreed with me and some of them didn't really. Because it's all about the relationship to the picture gallery. Yes. And that is the whole point of this. And now two artists have suddenly said they don't want to, they'll do a wall but not end to the picture gallery. And they're so famous apparently, you're not recording any of those things. I think the best way to term it would be Ingrid's artists were dead and mine were alive, and that's it really. you just got to be careful, you know, we, we used to run the scene and now we don't, you know. And there was drama, and there was tension. This is bullshit. I don't know how much more of this I can take. It's always there, isn't it? Okay. Bubbling under the surface. This is a challenging project, because we're bringing in artists like Peter, and we'll have like SF, yeah, a lot of people Flem, don't and these do guys are really things. non, really yeah. non-commercial artists. Yeah. So you have to approach and handle yeah. this in some way. This is not a commercial thing that I'm no, asking. No, 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 this isn't commercial, but it's.
Everybody gets up and over. The pub that Victoria Inn has a rower on it. Now, if you know about street art, rower is incredibly famous. He's a Belgian street artist. Rower is a force. He's a force of nature. You ask me yeah, yeah. in a strong way, I need to give you a strong answer. He agreed to go to Dulwich Picture Gallery and to be inspired, and I thought, what's he going to find? Um, there are pigs, there are cows there that he could find. He found a dog, and the dog was shitting. He found a shitting dog. So it's basically like this hunter kid that is chilling or sitting with his dogs, and one of his dogs is doing the, his business. So that's what I painted one of his dog, a dog doing his business. But it is in Dulwich Picture Gallery. I think inheriting street art is a certain degree of arrogance that the general public and the people that are going to see these murals want them. Um, and I think the counter to that is to produce really high quality works. It's different, I tell you what, it's made a difference to the street, we don't we? I don't know, I would rather a bunch of flowers be up there. You like it, Lawrence? No, I think it's absolutely disgusting. Why is that? Look at it. Look at it. It's a dog having a shit. Oh, it could be a dog just looking up. Rower gets it. You know, he gets the concept and he was engaged with it, but he did it on his terms. I think it's about yourself. You not let, not letting you be compromised by the situation. I don't think when I'm painting a, a shitting dog on the streets that are really compromising myself, no. The works are wonderful in their own right, but they're even more wonderful if you can see where the artist is coming from. And you can see the relationship between Baroque art and art of the present day. I mean, all through art history, artists have been inspired by others who've come before them. And this is just the same experience. I think even though everyone does graffiti and street art, they all like traditional and baroque art and it's, and it's part of our unconscious. No? We, we've all seen this kind of pictures and, and it was a, a great way to, to link the past and, and the present. This whole thing actually opened my mind a little bit. It's totally new to uh, use a, an old master's painting as an inspiration for a piece of mine. I'm adjusting my style massively to work on this project because I wouldn't normally paint a reinterpretation of a 16th century oil portrait. I like this challenge, you know, I like this very much. Thierry Noir is an incredibly important artist. He's renowned for painting the Berlin Wall throughout the 1980s every day without fail. I have chosen the painting called The Pharaoh Gives the Ring to Joseph, made by Gian Battista Tiepolo. The person on the painting are not at the same place like in the, on the original painting, but you can see this is exactly the same story, exactly the same people, yeah, but in the panoramic view. I think there was, a, there was one complaint, there's only really been one complaint in the whole festival, but the one that, that we did have was somebody thought these uh, pipes looked a bit like spliffs and these guys were smoking weed, which is quite funny. I think in the end it worked out really well because taking all the pieces as a whole, most of them relate well to paintings in Dulwich Picture Gallery. Because another sort of strand of this project was to have an example of every major international street artist in Dulwich. And the fact that 90% related to the picture gallery, that was wonderful. But if there was a 10% that didn't, I think that's fine too. Yo, we're at the uh, Dulwich House 265 Lordship Lane, and we've completely covered it in street art. Well, the house certainly wasn't in the original plan because we would have no idea that we'd get a house. We met some developers who offered up some hoardings, but then immediately I suddenly saw a giant house behind the hoardings, so I just went, whoom. It was just a really kind of instinctive thing, you know. There's a massive house, let's paint it. Griff, who's been instrumental in all of this, just came up with the idea of fusing the house as a number of rooms to display artist work internally and have sort of work externally. The house was scheduled for demolition. It was, it was always on borrowed time. And I think that's what makes it quite interesting, the fact it was only open for one weekend and then it's gone forever.
We were given the house on the 1st of April, and so for six weeks it could be used. My big mission is to pull out carpets, to make it as minimalistic, make it feel as much as a gallery as possible, you know? And then experience, because this is the first time we really work with, with a lot of walls, six walls, you know, if you think about six surfaces to, to paint, so it becomes a three-dimensional thing. Yeah, this is going to be where we're going to have a bar. Oh, this is the bar. This is the bar, so there's going to be a few pieces going up. To just roll in depending on where they go and what, what projects I have on. So they just roll in. So we had Rowie here for a while. Thierry Noir is kind of a permanent feature here now too. Yeah, this is uh, something unique for me to, to see the one big house completely painted inside, outside. Because you've got that mushroom up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what's that toaster? <laughs> I didn't even notice that. Oh, it's really awesome. awesome. <laughs> it's good. I love it. Yeah, it's good. 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 It's uh, Griff was like, oh, there's this big house in Dulwich, and I'm, I didn't, I don't really come to Dulwich much, and yeah, right enough, it's a big house, and the side's painted. I guess it's odd in the way that it's a house, so that's the weirdest part, because usually you never paint on someone's house, and, you know, loosely organised, it seems. Okay, guys, Yay. let's get the leather. You have international street artists. They fly in from all over the world. They've got to be accommodated. They've got to be fed. But there were no beds or anything in, in it, so they all slept on air beds. I've been living in uh, this house in Dulwich. It's just been like living in a squat, basically. We've well, only got food up, so what? How the fuck are we going to eat? Bro? I have lamb, um, just hot, like, like lamb guna. Lamb guna, one lamb guna. I could live here forever, to be honest with you lose myself down a hole of creativity. I've been staying in the house for, not for long, for a couple of nights, when I was working on this room. It's fun, it's, uh, again, it's like a bit going back in time and uh, going on a school trip. The house formed a fulcrum for a lot of things, you know, that house was, it was, it was loads of stuff, it was like a base, it was like a place where people socialised, um, so it was much more than just walls that we were painting. It formed a, a kind of a centre point to the whole thing. It is a shame it's been knocked down though. It's crazy. We were saying like that the, the artists involved. I mean, if people are going to put perspex over Banksy stuff, you know, a house like this should really remain. I think people are going to look back in 50 years and think, fucking, what the fuck happened to that place? Why did they knock it down? Ritual. Now this was the first one to go up about a month ago. He had to do it before the festival because he was getting married. And the, the, I knew that time was moving on and the day before he was married he was still on a cherry picker painting these guys. And I said, Connor, aren't you busy? He said, no, 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 it's only tomorrow. So he completely reproduced what was on the photograph on the wall. And I watched it going up and there were these two men boxing. I thought, there, oh, there isn't anyone like that in Dulwich Pitch Gallery boxing. Um, but they were in Regency outfit. And then he finished it. And I said, well, what's the relationship here? And he basically said it was a conceptual relationship. There was no image there. So that was enough. It had to be enough. That triangular group there of people celebrating has been printed out on the pavement. Update Colours have been updated and shadows have been added by Pablo Delgado. There's immense humour and invention in Pablo Delgado's work. There's something really refreshing about it. I try to minimise art. I try to do the less that I can. I just try to express an idea, so I just take images that are already there and I just rearrange them for me to develop an idea. So I do miniature base stops at the bottom of the walls. And so he really has done much more reproduction of works from the gallery than anybody else. 
Run, boy, run. This world is not meant for you. Run, boy, run. They're trying to catch you. This is just going to be an open house for the public and the people of Dulwich who have seen the big murals to come and have a look at some more intimate works in rooms and all over the walls. And then lastly, in this exhibition room, so to see some canvases and prints and things like that. We're opening to the public in less than an hour. So you're going to be too late if you see this. I think Christian's The Mushroom Man is absolutely great and it's partly because he's such a nice guy. As we got nearer and nearer the opening time and the loos were still disgusting and um, the place was still an absolute tip, Christian was the one who really pulled his finger out. He understood that. What I'd really like to do is fill in all those gaps. It's very time consuming. And I've already spent over a week on this damn room. The public, did they like it? I think yes. literally the five minutes before it opened I was chasing artists out and said you have to stop painting now you have your crap all over the floor the public is coming in you know in ten minutes it seemed like there were thousands of people most people expect to see this stuff in East London and nowhere else so it's quite refreshing to actually be in Dulwich doing this stuff this is something that I don't think ever happened before anywhere this type of relationship between old works and new works and getting the artists all to work um, towards us on a certain theme. I mean, you don't tell street artists what to do. Artists will have to come up with another way of subverting art, won't they? Once it becomes mainstream, you've got to come up with something else. I think what it is is a triumph over bureaucracy. Street art is a triumph over bureaucracy. Seeing stuff like this is fantastic. It's bringing art to people who won't necessarily see it. It does change people's experience of Dulwich. It changes people's experience of the city. I think that's quite a powerful thing. I think it's incredible. I'm, I'm staggered. I do understand that a lot of people, when they're living with it, find that it sort of brings the tone of the area down. But I think, especially in somewhere like London, where it's sort of so grimy and dingy in most of the areas, that it, it's uplifting. in a city where we're surrounded by so much advertising and things like this, it's quite nice to see a different message on the walls, especially if it's free art. But that's what makes this Baroque the Streets completely different. I look upon it in the long term. Dulwich Picture Gallery has been there for 200 years. There's no reason why these street artworks can't be there for 200 years. Mm -hmm.